Welcome back everybody and today we're going to be brushing up on our modeling skills again. I'm just going to be showing you how to create something from a project. So let's jump into it, archway. So I'm going to create a grid and we're going to start by making this in 2D essentially. We're going to, be start, we're going to start by creating essentially a spline or a curve and then turning that into an extruded 3D object. So this is the base, it's going to be our wall here. And then I'm going to create a circle. Um, so looking at this, basically, I want to chop off the bottom of this and use the top part of this as the head of our object. A couple other th ways that I tried to do this, which weren't successful, I tried creating a, a four-sided circle, rotating it 45 degrees, stretching it out. And then if I click S for selection, Click two for point selection, select your top two points and then do poly bevel. I tried beveling these, which created, it sort of worked, but I didn't really like the way that it was beveling here. It's got some weird interpolation where it's like stopping at the top and smoothing out. I tried doing it some funky ways with Vex, which weren't successful. So this was the way that I ended up doing it. Basically, I create a circle. Uh, I turn the subdivisions pretty high and then uh, I do an open arc uh, and then I'm going to do what's it? yeah 180 actually should be 0 180 so we've got the opposite of what we had so now we've got the top of the arch which is what I want and then I'm going to uh, drag the you can either drag these bottom bits out which not procedural I want proceduralism so I'm going to do a copy transform drag this down on Y and then scale this to zero on S Y. So we've got a flattened version. Now, if I visualize our points here, you can see that um, we've got tons of points that we don't need on the bottom. Um, and this would be fine if we weren't going to be like beveling and stuff like that on our later objects, because these points are going to be brought over when we extrude. What I'm going to do is I'm going to resample these bottom, this bottom curve here to get rid of all these points. So if I go up here and output these groups here, so it's gonna output the top and the bottom group, and I'm gonna resample the bottom group, which is group two, or group one, I guess, uh, and just drag the length up, or you can, if you wanna be 100% sure, you can do one segment as a maximum segment. And then we need to connect these two. How do we do that? We put down a, a join, so let me drop that down. And by default, it's like, oh, it's not working. It's blending, which we don't want. So turn that off and we'll get what we want. And now we need the other side and we're gonna use an ends to close out this curve. And it's gonna just look for the last two points that aren't connected. Uh, and we're gonna do close straight. And now we've got a closed curve that we can then extrude. We can do whatever we want with. I'm gonna move this up as well. So let's put down a transform. Shift that up a bit on Y. And now I'm going to bring our plane and do a buoy between these two. So select these and then put down a boolean. And I'm going to do subtract. And since these are 2D, these are not solids, we need a surface. So there we go, now we've got a hole in our wall. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this. So let's put down extrude extrude this out and I'm going to close the back as well. What that does is it just adds a back face to this object. And now uh, I'm going, I want to add like a little bit inside of here, make it a little fancier. So I'm going to extrude this bit out here. How I'm going to do that is before a boolean, we're just going to take our curved object and I'm going to extrude it in. And then we just go and insect, drag this in, and we're gonna get rid of the front. So we're just left with this now, which is what we want. And then I'm gonna extrude this on its own, like that. And then, as you can see, these are not in the right place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of our transform op, uh, expressions. 
for z because this is on z that we want to center it. So I'm going to do minus c e z, and then we're just going to duplicate this over Alt drag and then put this here. So that's now centered on z and if we merge these together we have them centered like so uh, i'm going to reduce the extrusion a little bit on this and i also want i'll basically want to extrude inner again and the way i'm going to do this is pretty funky but uh, it works and it's procedural so we're going to do it single out this object and then I'm going to clip this. This is a new thing. I don't think I've talked about this. It's very, very good. It's like a super quick way of just setting a, a direction that you want to cut and it will cut it without any issues. So the reason I'm doing this is so that we have two separate uh, objects. So when I get rid of this front and back face, we're going to have an object that is in two and then I can assemble the user pack these, um, assemble and pack, and then I'm going to delete one of the objects. So what we could do is we can either select these by the, the normal, so we could select Z minus and uh, uh, plus Z minus, uh, but a quicker way of doing it would be just to output whatever side this is. So we've got output back. That's right, yeah. So now we've got a group for that and we can delete this group here. What else? Is it front? Yeah, actually a faster way of doing this actually, because we're all about that, that optimization, we do extrude side. That's the side we don't want to delete. And what we can do is we can do extrude side in here and then delete non-selected, which will create two separate objects that then we can assemble or put through an assembler, create pack geometry. And now we have two separate objects here, as you can see, represented by those points. And then we're just gonna blast or delete one of these primitives. So if you just set it to zero, yep, that's the correct one that we've deleted now. Uh, and then what we can do is unpack this so we can edit it again. And since this is centered, what I'm going to do is I can just transform this on S Z and scale this down on Z, maybe 0.9. Extrude this in. Actually, before we do all this, maybe we should mirror this. So just stick a mirror here. Uh, and now we've it's, it's symmetrical. And by default, it's going to consolidate the seam. Essentially, it's going to fuse these two points together. So let's just test if that's true. So select this point, it's going to create an edit node and then drag this around. Yep, that's one point now. Uh, so I've scaled it down, I'm going to extrude it now and then we're going to bevel it. So now poly bevel. And I want the round preset. So that's looking good. Uh, ignore flat edges so we don't extrude or bevel that. See if anything else is uh, beveling that we don't need. Generally, you should go with like 40 degrees, but that looks like it's working. And now what we can do is we can fuse or uh, merge these two objects here. And we should have an object that matches up nicely. Uh, I might not output the back so we don't have an extrusion or we don't have a bevel on that. Now it looks like it's more part of this object. And then I'm going to go and bevel these two objects at once because I like to live dangerously. Around. And we have this issue again. You see this nasty topology that we're getting. So like in my prior tutorials, you can either extrude inner or you can remesh the whole front of this object to fix this. Another way you can do it is you can put down a normal 
and you can actually just put that to like 15 degrees and that's fixed it as well so I'm gonna stick with that because I don't want to have to go and do normal selections and stuff like that to fix that topology but it's looking fine now can't see any issues with it and then finally we're gonna clip this on the bottom maybe shunt it up a bit first and now it's clipped to the floor and we can put down whatever we want in the scene like a grid uh, we've got our flooring installed in our lovely new house. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. I know it's pretty simple, but a lot of the techniques used in here can be repurposed to something else later down the line or in other projects. So yeah, have a good one.